What is the law on surveillance? What is surveillance? And can you use surveillance legally? These questions are not straightforward to answer, even if you are a lawyer like me. I'm a barrister of England and Wales, and these laws can be fairly complicated. Not to mention different jurisdictions have different rules, regulations, scenarios, requirements and default positions when it comes to surveillance. It also matters whether you're an employer, an employee, a member of the public, at home, out and about, a shopkeeper, civil servants or acting on behalf of the government or local authority. Surveillance can be broken down into a few main categories video recording, audio recording, tracking and monitoring, and other forms of data collection. This video is not intended to be the definitive guide to law in every jurisdiction and in every situation, but it should give you some helpful pointers. Let's begin with private citizens going about their own business, whether that's in your own home or out in public. One of the primary considerations that you should be familiar with is that of the reasonable expectation of privacy. This is a fairly universal concept, regardless of the jurisdiction you are in. Let's say, for example, you're walking down the street or into a bar, you have a less reasonable expectation of privacy than if you're walking into a bathroom or changing room inside a clothing store. It is certainly more reasonable for you to expect privacy if you are in the bathroom or if you are trying on clothes in a clothing store however much the shop wants to make sure you're not stealing the clothes. Similar arguments could be made inside your own home. If you have guests to your home and you have internal CCTV monitoring, it might be wise to let them know that it's there. But all the same, there is less of an expectation of privacy than there would be if they go to your bathroom. Quite clearly, if you are setting up covert cameras in your bathroom to catch your guests, this is going to be wrong and against laws in virtually every jurisdiction. So how does this apply with CCTV generally? Well, in most states of the United States, as long as you are only recording video and not audio, generally it is okay, although in some states it does require you to put signs up to alert people to the fact that you are making video recordings. In the United Kingdom, although you'll see these signs telling you that there is CCTV in operation, it is not always a strict requirement. If you are a homeowner in the United Kingdom and you're using CCTV to monitor your own property for burglary and prevent theft, the Data Protection Act 2018, which implements GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulations, won't apply. However, if your CCTV is capturing areas outside of your own personal property, such as neighbouring driveways and other people in the vicinity, the data gathered is going to be subject to the DPA. Worse still, if you have a camera trained on a neighbouring property, particularly a window, you could be in more serious trouble, because this could amount to an invasion of their privacy and harassment. If you have or you are considering having CCTV in and around your own home, even if it's just for your own personal use, you should certainly look at the information Commissioner's Office guidance to CCTV to make sure that you are using it correctly. If you are an employer implementing CCTV, you will certainly have to comply with the Data Protection Act and abide by the CCTV Code of Practice and the Employment Practices Data Protection Code. But it's worth noting that if an employer seeks to use video footage that has been obtained covertly in order to dismiss an employee, that might amount to unfair or constructive dismissal. Similarly, in the United States, there are federal and state privacy laws that you must adhere to. In every employment scenario, it is better to be open and transparent and have a guide and a code as to how CCTV is used and stored. So what about members of the public video recording in public? Again, generally this is okay, but it still comes down to whether there was a reasonable expectation of privacy. So what about spy cameras and hidden cameras? Well, first of all, it is illegal to fit and operate a spy camera to a business or property that you do not own or do not reside in. But it is legal to set up one of these cameras in your business or your own home, subject to the areas that I've already mentioned, such as a reasonable expectation of privacy. Moving on to audio recordings, this can differ greatly. For example, in the United States, to record audio of a conversation, you ordinarily need at least one person's consent. And in some states, you will need the consent of all participants to the conversation, whether this is in person or on the telephone. In the UK, as a private person, you can generally record your conversations with any person without consent if you intend to make it for your own records and you don't intend to share it with another person. This is why there can be difficulties with admissibility of evidence if you've made a covert recording without telling the other person. Although there are instances where a court will hear the evidence, such as family proceedings where the court might have doubts as to the safety of a child, 
and it deems fit to hear the evidence even though it was covertly recorded. If you are a business or an employer, you can record those conversations as long as there is an implied consent. You should be in no doubt, however, that to record someone else's private conversation without consent is not legal, as there is certainly a reasonable expectation of privacy. Tracking somebody's location and movements is another area. If you are a business and you have employees that need to drive around, you'll likely have a good reason to track where they are, productivity being one of them. And you can do this, providing that you follow certain steps. Fairly obviously, you need to obtain their consent, but this can be done by way of their contract. You must also comply with data protection laws, which includes, among many others, keeping the data safe. It's also worth bearing in mind that if they park regularly at their home address, you might not want to track their location whilst they are at home. But if you do, this will certainly be personal data and should be treated and guarded as such. As for domestic and private vehicle tracking, there are many reasons why you might want to do this. For example, you might want to track a family member so you can make sure you know where they are in their hour of need. But it's important to remember that you cannot track anybody without their knowledge or permission, and you cannot share or make public any of the data, such as GPS data, with the public. Similar principles apply to computer monitoring. For example, if you are the employer, you will need to get the consent, but again, you can do this by having it as a term of the contract. Again, you must not share or make public any of the data that is gathered, and you must take appropriate steps to protect that data under data protection laws. You must also only use the information for the purpose that it was gathered, and it must be a legitimate purpose. As for domestic or private tracking of computers, you cannot track a computer that belongs to someone else. It should go without saying that it is not legal to hack or otherwise access a computer belonging to someone else without their knowledge and permission. And again, of course, you cannot share any of that data if you've gathered any. So you can see that whilst there are lots of intricacies and complications with the law surrounding surveillance and data and privacy, a lot of it is common sense and revolves around the notion of protecting that person's reasonable expectation of privacy. If you are an employer, you will have various legitimate reasons to gather and monitor various activities, whether it's by CCTV, by audio, computer tracking, vehicle tracking, and so on, but you need to obtain the appropriate consents and you can usually do this by the terms of your contract and by having open and accessible policies so that everybody knows what's going on. In your private and domestic life, there are more things you can do, but still you have to be mindful of this reasonable expectation of privacy because breaching that could have serious consequences. So this was part one and the overview of surveillance law. Subscribe for part two.